You've got a job offer, and now you have a choice. Negotiate or not. If you decide not to, and your buddy, who got the same offer, negotiates and gets a $7,000 increase. By the end of 30 years, your buddy will be making $100,000 more a year than you. Think about that. Have you ever walked away from a negotiation feeling like you lost, even if there was a deal on the table? You're not alone. Traditional negotiation often focuses on winning, leaving many feeling pressured and unsatisfied. But what if there's a better way? Enter Margaret Neal, a leading negotiation expert, who challenges the very foundation of our negotiation mindset. When we negotiate, most of us view the goal of a negotiation as to get an agreement. This is wrong. The goal of a negotiation is not to get a deal. The goal of a negotiation is to get a good deal. We need to be able to separate what a good deal is from what a bad deal is. So that means we need at least three pieces of information. Professor Neal argues that the goal of a negotiation shouldn't be just getting a deal, but getting a good deal. This subtle shift in perspective unlocks a world of possibilities. Instead of seeing negotiations as win-lose battles, we can approach them as collaborative problem-solving opportunities. The first thing we need to know is, what is our alternative? What happens to us if this negotiation fails? What are we left with? What's the status quo or what alternatives exist for us? And the research is very clear. He or she with a better alternative does better. Understanding your BATNA, best alternative to a negotiated agreement, this refers to your best course of action if the negotiation fails. Knowing your BATNA gives you a strong anchor and prevents you from accepting unfavorable terms just to avoid walking away. Secondly, we need to know what our reservation price is. What's the point at which we are indifferent between saying yes and invoking our alternative? And when you negotiate, it's critical that you understand where that reservation price is because that's the point at which you are indifferent where a no looks as good as a yes. Defining your reservation price. This is the point at which you're indifferent between accepting the offer or pursuing your BATNA. Knowing your reservation price empowers you to walk away from bad deals without feeling regret. And the third point, which is really important, and one that people often overlook, is that not only do we have to think about our alternative and our reservation price, we also need to think about our aspiration. What is an optimistic assessment of what it is we can achieve in this negotiation? Negotiations aren't one-sided. By understanding the other party's needs and interests, you can craft solutions that benefit them as well. This fosters long-term relationships and avoids future conflicts. So how do you get more of what you want? Let me suggest that four steps will help you. The first step is to assess the situation. Is this a situation where I can have influence on the outcome? To change that outcome in a way that makes me better off. And I need to weigh the potential benefits from negotiating with the potential costs for negotiating. And will the benefits outweigh the costs? The second step is I need to prepare. And there are really two aspects of this step. Number one, I need to understand what my interests are, what I'm really trying to achieve in this negotiation. And the second component is I need to understand the interests and preferences of my counterpart. Many of us may understand what our interests are, but few of us actually understand at a deep level what the preferences and interests are of our counterparts. Third, 
Now comes the ask. Engage with your counterpart. Look at these disputed social situations as opportunities to negotiate. You have information that your counterparts don't have. And this is what you bring to the table. If they knew all your information, if they knew your perspective, they don't need you. Because you have unique information, and because they have unique information, that's where the value is created. Fourth, you need to package. Now, what do I mean by that? Most of us, when we negotiate, negotiate issue by issue. This is a really bad strategy because when you negotiate issue by issue, every issue is adversarial. You either win or lose. When you're packaging issues, you now have the opportunity to trade among the issues. So, think about proposing solutions, alternative solutions to your counterpart in packages. And to help you out, because your counterpart will probably want to negotiate issue by issue, think about using if-then language. If I give you this, then I get that. What you're doing is you're yoking various issues together into a package. To get more of what you want, there are four steps. Assess, prepare, ask, package. To get Let's pause for a while and all ears here, business minds. Are you ready to take control of your financial future? I have something special to unveil, an exclusive online course that promises to empower you in the world of investments. Cash Flow Academia This course is designed for everyone, from beginners dipping their toes into the investment waters to seasoned pros seeking advanced strategies. Don't miss this opportunity to take charge of your financial future. Click the links below and enroll now. To give you an example, my dean recently sent me an email indicating that I would have to be going from five courses a year to six courses a year because he had received information from the provost that we needed to be consistent in the amount of contact hours and course credit. I was not happy about that email. So my response was, I think I need to talk to my dean. Let's negotiate. But before I started the negotiation, I thought hard about why was he doing this? What was in his interest? His interest was probably to make sure the provost was happy. What was my interest? Not to move from five classes to six classes. And it turns out I teach two different types of classes, MBA electives and then some specialty classes. There are lots of folks who teach MBA electives. There are very few folks who teach specialty classes. So I thought I should focus on the specialty classes. So then I went for the ask. I set up a meeting, and part of that meeting was to verify the information that I had gathered in my planning session. And it did turn out to be true. He was interested in making the provost happy. So then came the proposal that packaged our interests. He said he wanted consistency between contact hours and credit. So what he did is he changed the credit to match the contact hours. I suggested, why not change the contact hours to match the credit? Because it turns out that in my courses, in my specialty courses, we always went over. So while they were three hours, it was common that we would go for three and a half to four hours. So let's make them four hour courses and keep me at five rather than move me to six. He said to me, I never even thought of that. And why didn't he? It wasn't that weird. Because he didn't have the information that I had, that my classes routinely ran over. And so when I gave him that information, it created a solution that made him as well off as he was and made me a whole lot better. By the way, I was the only faculty member to get an exception. And why did I get an exception? Because everybody else had the same email for two reasons. One, I decided to negotiate. And number two, 
I provided him with a solution that made us both better off. Neil's philosophy extends beyond business negotiations. It can be applied to everyday interactions, from salary negotiations to resolving conflicts with family and friends. By focusing on creating value and understanding each other's perspectives, we can foster more collaborative and satisfying relationships in all aspects of life. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more video updates.